Good evening. First two are proud members of the BCTF. Thank you for your determination, your solidarity, and your support. You are amazing. Tonight, BC teachers voted overwhelmingly to back the call for binding arbitration that would see an end to the strike and open our schools. In all, 30,669 teachers cast ballots. A total of 30,490 teachers, 99.4% voted yes. Tomorrow morning, custodial staff could be pulling chairs off desks. Teachers could be setting up their classrooms. School counselors could be finalizing their timetables. Teachers could be powering up the smart boards. And classes could start this week and our children could be learning. Unfortunately, tonight, there is a single group of people standing in the way of our schools opening their doors tomorrow. The BC Liberal government's refusal to accept binding arbitration is now the only reason children won't be back in class. Every single one of those MLAs must ask themselves what is the real reason that they are keeping our schools closed. Their refusal is certainly not in the best interests of our students or the province. Binding arbitration is a fair, workable and pragmatic plan to open our schools and get our children back into classrooms with their teachers. It's a standard labor relations practice that allows an independent party to assess the proposals from both sides and implement a fair settlement. We know the government has rejected the idea, but they are the only ones, and we hope that they reconsider. Teachers, students, parents, mayors, school boards, legal experts, union leaders, ed editorial boards, British Columbians across this province have all called for binding arbitration. This government is alone in its stance. And we ask you again, let's change your mind. BC teachers have led the way for 18 months proposing solutions and moving negotiations forward. The government has said no to arbitration, has tried to stall and block mediation, and has not moved on any monetary proposals in negotiations since June. Not one new dollar to deal with the learning needs of our students in our classrooms. If we're going to get a deal and get schools open, the government must show some good faith and we need to work together. Arbitrate, mediate, or negotiate. It's time to put public education first. Drop E80, stop trying to protect yourself from the courts, and again, let's work together to reach a fair deal that improves funding for our schools and most importantly, support for all of our students. So today I'm joined by two teachers, Matt Westfall from Surrey and Leslie Lopez from Vancouver, as well as Kate Milbury, a parent from Vancouver. All three of them will share their thoughts with you as well. And we thank them for taking the time to be here with us tonight. Leslie. My name is Leslie Lopez, and I'm a kindergarten teacher in Vancouver. Today I voted yes for binding arbitration because students need to be in schools learning with their teachers. I'm also a single mom of three teens with special needs. I see the challenges and supports that are needed from kindergarten all the way to grade 12. Children are coming to school with multiple needs and they need our support to be successful. Children need more support than we can currently provide them. Each day I know that my students deserved better than I was able to provide. Children are becoming more anxious in crowded classes each year. I love teaching kindergarten, but I don't know how much longer I can continue. I will hold the line to ensure that all students' needs are met, including my own children. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Matt Westfall, and I teach at a high school in Surrey. Today I voted yes because binding arbitration is a fair and rapid way to settle this dispute, get students back into classrooms. It's been used in other time, in other places, and in also in BC and other sectors. And more importantly, it's the only real way to end this dispute with a government that seems not to be willing to negotiate in any meaningful way. 
And what I've seen in, in my time as a teacher is that learning conditions are being degraded. And I'm, I have a serious concern about the future of our system under the government's present policy of underfunding the system. And I'll just give a couple of examples to explain what I mean. When we talk about class size and class composition, here's some of the reality that that can mean for a teacher. It could mean that when I've given a lesson and I've given students something to work on then, and there's various hands up around the classroom, I don't have time to get to all the students who need help before the end of the class. And that happens class after class. And so it's un I'm unable to give them the sort of education, the quality instruction that they really deserve. I do my best, as do all my colleagues. Composition can mean that given all the diverse needs in a classroom, it's simply not possible for the teacher, again, to give students the full educational experience that they all deserve and that they all need. Some of them need it, needing it so desperately. Now, the government, in it, its policy and its proposals, has relied on the LIF, which is the Learning Improvement Fund. What that is, is $75 million per year for the whole province to try and provide for special needs. And I, I was on my school's staff committee last year, and I was able to see how that works in practice. The principal would come up a list of different projects, possible proposals we might make for the LIF. For example, to enable to fund a part of a counseling position so we could have three full-time counselors at a high school. Or to enable a teacher to spend two blocks work, working only with students who are at risk of failing. Or to fund a special program for students who are at risk. Or special intensive reading programs. So the principal comes up with a list and it gets sent into the district. So our proposals are this. And none of those, there isn't a single frivolous proposal on that list. They are all important to making the school, to improving learning at the school. And so the list is like this that comes out, and what comes back is maybe this, if it's a good year, or this, if it's less. Not, and, what that, and this happens at every school. So what the LIF, the Learning Improvement Fund, really means, with only $75 million a year, is that no school gets what it really needs. No school is properly funded. And schools have to compete with each other to try and get what scarce funding there is. And the government is not proposing to put anything new on the lift, and it's simply not adequate. The final thing that I will share is, as my experience as a teacher, is just how difficult it is in a dispute like this when it feels as though we're not being treated with respect by the government. Uh, the Premier back in May, she said, with teachers it seems like it's always about the money. It's not really about quality education, implying that we're greedy. Now, many teachers, myself included, come to te teaching as a second career and take a big pay cut to do it. All teachers in BC could be making more money in other provinces. That's not something that greedy people do. Greedy people don't spend their own money on their classrooms to make it a more welcoming and enriching classroom environment, as especially my elementary colleagues do. Greedy people don't give up thousands of dollars on the picket lines to help other people's children. So I, I say to this government, enough with that talk. Get serious. Get serious either about negotiating, real negotiating, meaning you're willing to move your position, or arbitration. And if, if your proposal is so fair and so reasonable, you should have nothing to fear from going to a neutral third party to decide. So thank you very much. Hi. My name is Kate Milberry, and... Um, my friends and I, parents and non-parents alike, started a little website called FamiliesFundingTeachers.ca and we did so as a way to show our solidarity with BC's teachers. To date, British Columbians, parents and non-parents alike, have donated more than $33,000 to the BC's TF through the website and that's just in nine days and that's sometimes in five dollar increments. I am humbled and inspired by the support that British Columbians have shown our teachers during the strike. And I'm really proud. I'm proud to be a citizen of this province. I just came from Bandita's, an East Van restaurant that is donating 100% of their profits to teachers every Wednesday for the duration of the strike. The turnout was amazing. And I think the message is clear. Christy Clark, it's time to give our teachers a fair deal. Agree to arbitration and abide by the outcome. British Columbians do not believe that you're above the law. We need you to get our kids back to school. Thanks.
The specific wording of the question that was put to teachers. Uh, I, I don't have the. Uh, yeah, we, we can get you the specific wording. I don't have it with me up front here. But can you go over rich. what the conditions were? Well, it, it uh, dealt with that uh, for, for government to uh, drop E80 and for let the uh, court process wind its way through and agree to uh, binding arbitration. So basically, we are asking our members that question. And if government agreed to binding arbitration and dropping E80 and letting the courts wind its way through, then we would uh, end our strike. Any other conditions whatsoever from your side for arbitration? Uh, no, the only uh, condition is uh, drop E80, respect the court process that's happening now. And it was the government that asked for the stay instead of restoring the provisions and providing the school districts the necessary funding to implement it. So that's the uh, only condition. Jim, what do you expect is now, uh, since the government has made it clear that they don't want to arbitrate. Well, I think our, our, uh, our members are sending a strong message that they support the call that we made on Friday and that we've fast-tracked it and that we are ready to stand down if government would agree. So that's, that's the change. And what we're also seeing is the support all across the province in terms of you know school districts, mayors, uh, I think the Vancouver Sun uh, editorial uh, a while back, uh, in various uh, unions putting their support, uh, city councils and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of uh, groups, British Columbians across this province are asking government to agree to uh, binding arbitration. And you know just because you say no once it doesn't mean you can't change your mind. And, uh, you know, we're encouraging uh, the government to uh, change their mind. And uh, we think that this is the, the fastest way that uh, we can get our schools open and uh, a fair way to uh, end the dispute. But the government's still in the financial bind in the sense that arbitration comes will be forced to pay and, and potentially go into deficit. That's their argument they've made. The financial issue hasn't changed on their front. So. Well, that you know, seems to be the number one sticking point for them, not public opinion. Well, that, that's what government says, and, and they throw out these figures. And when you ask them to back up these figures, they throw out that they've got to raise you know, gas, whatever, five cents a liter or whatever. You know, when you actually look at the proposal that we're putting on the table, and excluding the wage part, because we're only 1% apart, it, it amounts to $3 a day per student over five years. And the way we've put our proposals is that, you know, we staggered them to minimize the cost in each year. And we know that government, even in their own uh, fiscal budget for, I think it's three years that they forecasted, in each of those years they forecasted a surplus and an additional contingency fund. And so there is money there. And it's also about choices that government makes in, in their spending. And, uh, you know, we think that uh, uh, public education um, should be an, a choice that government makes in terms of their spending. It has to be a priority. And so it's about the priorities. And, you know, we, we, we've talked about where government has spent money in the past. The roof, the convention center, I love using California power. $750 million. And this is all during a time where government said they had no money. And we know they have options within the corporate tax, too. What further concessions are the teachers willing to make? Uh, have you asked government when it's time for them to actually move on their proposals and start? Putting at least some more money into addressing the learning needs of our is students. Is there anything that the teachers union is willing to move on, or is it just? Actually, we we've, we've made many moves. We made huge moves in June when we made the initial proposal to uh, let the court process wind its way through, and to look at a new fund, an in interim, to address the learning needs of our students. And we made a huge movement in our salary, going to eight percent over five years and increasing the term length. And uh, government uh, hardly moved at all. They've been basically at the same wage piece. 
we made. Stalemate, though, so no more movement on the union side at this point, is that what you're saying? You know, we're actually looking for solutions. And we know it's about compromise. We know it's about give and take. And are we willing to make more movements? Absolutely. But it's time government at least makes one move, and they haven't made that move yet. And so we need to show, see some faith from government that they are going to actually move, and they haven't. And uh, arbitration your only play at this point? I mean, you seem really focused on that right now, even though the government has repeatedly said no. Is there still an option outside of binding arbitration to resolve this? Absolutely. We have said that binding arbitration is the quickest way to settle this dispute and get schools open. We've been calling for mediation. We're ready to enter into full-scale mediation at any time, so mediation is still an option. And maybe government will agree. And we're also, you know, in terms of mediation, and if we can't agree, we get closer, then the mediator can make recs for both parties to consider. Call to the other side to try to open up those lines of discussion again. How often does anyone reach out from either side? You know, we're, we're reaching out, and uh, you have to make the calls. You have to talk with Vince Reddy. And, uh, you know, government says, uh, you know, and the minister said that uh, you know, they're ready to be at a table and uh, they're ready to mediate, so let's make that happen. And so, this is the next piece for us in terms of uh, the vote. And it's not like now we're asking them to say yes and then we're going to go to vote. So we've chosen to do our vote now. We have our vote. We're asking them to reconsider their decision. Quickest way to end the dispute and open up schools and get teachers back in classrooms doing what they love doing as teaching and with our students. Of, uh, mortgaging the building. Oh, sorry. Is there thoughts of mortgaging this building for more money as part of the fund? Uh, in, in, you know, in, in terms of uh, our internal things, that's something that, that we deal with uh, in terms of decisions that we make with our uh, own memberships. You, Question? You won't sorry? You won't tell us if you're considering that option? Uh, this is our building. <coughs> And uh, that's not an option that we're considering at this point in time, no. Some would say that the, today's vote uh, was just sort of a ploy to score brownie points with the public and parents. I mean, what would you have to say about that? Well, you know, we've had people calling us to have a vote. And so we have a vote. And it's a meaningful vote. Because binding arbitration has its risks for us. And it's not something we've called for before. And so when we put the call out and we ask our members to vote, and it's a strong show of good faith on, be on behalf of our members that they're committed to this as a way to resolve this deal because it's been 18 months. I've got to reiterate, is it really meaningful if I gain for a third time the province says no, we're, we're not going to do it? You know, when you go back to the members, for a variety of different votes and ask questions, it's always meaningful. We don't take our votes lightly. And we have a, a, a proud history and tradition of going to our members uh, to take a vote. And so it's an important vote for us. It's an important message for, for government, important message for public. So, you know, it's okay to change your mind. We've changed our mind on a number of things. Thank you.